Okay, I'm Tony DeFrank back with our October 20, uh, 2021 installment of Covering Classic Cars. And today we're at the beautiful Finish Line Auto Club in Costa Mesa with customer uh, Ray Dunham. And we shot uh, not one but two of your Lincoln uh, Zephyrs for our uh, holiday catalog. So um, you'll see that in your inbox or uh, mailbox uh, coming this holiday season. So Ray, thanks for spending the time with us today. Really appreciate it. And um, I guess we met just at, by chance, I guess, Cruiser for Cure. Need, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I first of all, thank you. It's a pleasure that you've selected my car, and I've been a customer of yours for probably 15 plus years. We were just discussing, I think, that I've purchased at least eight covers over the years for different cars. But I think we had our formal introduction at the Cruising for a Cure a few years ago when I was looking to have a custom-made cover for the uh, 39 Zephyr. Yeah, and my, yes, and my father and I were there that day, needed some help, we measured it. And then um, just because COVID and everything, I guess we had in, we had talked on the phone about some covers, but we hadn't really uh, seen the car cover in person. And then we ran into you at Donut Derelicts. Yeah. And I guess two months later or so, we're, here we are shooting for the holiday cover. So it's kind of funny how things come together. Yeah, absolutely. And the cover that I have for this car was your top of the line, custom made. It's beautiful, fits like a glove. And uh, again, you have a lifelong long customer. Well, well, hey, we're, we're happy to hear that. My father always loves hearing that. And we're just happy that we made a one-off cover there at the show and it came out great. And yeah, we'll, might, people might see some photos on the blog after this, but it's a, but enough about California car cover sure. and, our, and my business. Like people, I, I get to yap on these videos like all the time. People want to hear about the car and what, um, you know, we kind of set up this interview and this, this shoot as part for the 39. So like, how did like the, the dragger come about? Well, the, uh, the 39 started off as a three window coupe and the goal was to do a conversion to a uh, fastback and add the quarter windows, which is kind of the opposite of what most people do. Most people today are doing conversions from sedans and or five windows to three windows. But the goal was to create a body style that would have looked like it was a production car from 1939. So in addition to doing the roofs, restructuring the entire uh, door from the A pillar to the B pillar. We lengthened the doors, we lengthened the rear fenders, we pancaked the hood, we split the windshield, sloped over the front fenders, made the running board, so, and everything in between, custom <laughs> trim, et cetera. So it was, it was an 11 year project. And I was gonna say, this, there's no way this was like a, a two years at your local car builder shop kind of, kind of ordeal. It had to take um, a while. And what, I guess, what condition was the, the car in when you found it? A, a good friend of mine who's actually passed, he passed a few years ago, was overseeing the project before I bought it. And they had a kind of similar concept that they were trying to construct, but it just didn't work out and the owner didn't want to follow through with the project, so then I took over. And the goal initially was to just, uh, you know, clean it up, wire it, plumb it, shoot it in primer and drive it. But one thing led to another. <laughs> The good news, later. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was introduced to Steve Wilk. Steve Wilk from Wilk Works is the gentleman that did all the work on the car. He was the apprentice on the original build, so he knew the car inside and out. And he had, you know, over the time that it sat before I took ownership, he had started his own shop. So he worked with me over the the eleven years, and I'm proud to say that he's one of my best friends today. Well, that's cool, and especially about you know the this like classic car hot rod hobby. It's it's a lot of just friends, and everyone gets older. Or, or fatter or just yeah. but I don't know what it is. Well, that's it. It's at least how I feel I'm doing about it. But you grow up in it and it's really just an extension of your family. So every Saturday, every Sunday, it's like you're at the car show, cars and coffee, you're seeing all the same people on these yeah. friends and become partners in projects and then you, you know them for life. Well, sure. And just like running into you at Donut Derelicts, you know, that's a, uh, I go there at least a couple times a month in Huntington Beach. It's a great little get together on a Saturday morning. But um, yeah, Steve just was fantastic to work with. I went over there to his shop. He's out in the, uh, out in the Paris area, Nuevo. Um, on the weekends, just to do what I could do to get my hands dirty. I was really responsible for the styling, the choices of the colors, interior, obviously some of the body and, and you know modifications and things like that, I played a role, but he did the work. But it was a, it was a joint effort for sure. And then you brought up the color now, like I think, I, to me, when I see this color, and then even our photographer Rick, we're like, it's a, it's a late '30s car. It has this like, like American military. I'm like, that's like a, like an, this army tan. And you, then you said, no, it's like some like a '70s. Well, where's, the, where's the color the, from? The goal <laughs> was to put a color on the car that would have looked like it was period correct, but I wanted to do something different. I didn't want it to be so different that it didn't work with the car. Um, but it started off as a mid '70s Toyota FJ color that we then custom mixed 
we darkened it up a little bit, pulled a little bit of the olive green out. And I can tell you relative to the color, the best compliment I've been paid was, this is the ugliest color I've ever <laughs> seen, but it's perfect on this car. And, and it really does, and hopefully it's not getting too loud here. Uh, Finish Line uh, Auto Club was a fantastic host for today, but they are adjacent to like John Wayne Airport in Orange County. So we're trying to do this in between jets taking off, but <laughs> as, uh, as Ray mentioned, yeah, like the, it just works. It just, it looks like it came from like a, it would have been built like in like a, like a late 30s production or like some like 40s era kind of hot ride. That's like a, where the car just works. Yeah, well, thank you. The goal was with the car from end to end, interior, exterior, choices, modifications to all be consistent so there'd be an even flow with the entire car. Yeah. And yeah, is that the interior, it's, yeah, everything is right. Now, what about like underneath? Is like, are there any mods? I know yes. if, if you've seen it, that's not the, the, the right height on there, so it has some air suspension. United flight here, but um, yeah, it has the air suspension, but what kind of, like, is there chassis mods or the engine mods? Yeah, it's got a full custom chassis on it, four link in the rear, um, independent front suspension, four wheel disc brakes, uh, AccuAir, uh, computerized air ride suspension all the way around, it's got a, an automatic transmission, and then a Chevy crate motor. We did, however, in the engine compartment, um, dress it to really go with the styling of the car with scripted uh, Lincoln valve covers off of a Y block and a big oil bath um, air cleaner, air filter setup. Um, also um, an external oil filter canister that had been gutted and we put an external uh, device internal where you could put a screw on oil filter in the inside of it. We ran all stainless and car copper hard lines and then also um, early cloth wiring just to give it a really nice feel internal. Oh, yeah, definitely, well make sure we have yeah, pop the hood and get some big shots of that if sure. you can, because people are going to ask about that too. That sounds really cool. And, um, and then I guess the, and I guess the, the, the dragger caught her eye because they would uh, seen a Cruiser for your Cure and then it was like a selection for one of the like, like good guys. Was it Custom or Hot Rod of the Year as it was, well? It was, uh, yes, yeah, so it was one of the top five finalists for Good Guys Custom of the Year, which is quite an honor because if you looked at the cars that, that the other four cars selected, I think two or three of them were Riddler contenders, and uh, the other was a car that was up for the um, Grand National Roaster Show Sloniker Award. And I mean, most of these cars were multi-million dollar builds or close to it. And uh, so I was flattered and uh, completely honored that they had selected me in that category. Would have liked to have won, but you know, you can't win them all. Yeah, but, but you, hey, you don't, I think guys have done wish just to, I mean, if there's a top 25 or top 10, but if sure. you get into the final selection, you know, and, and good guys, um, and they're, they're award winners, or they're the cream of the crop, so you're in the in that final group. That says a lot about what you and, uh, and your colleague Steve really kind of like your vision and your like the fabrication and the, the finished work on that in the vehicle. Well, thank you. And, and what was interesting was it was in 2020. So initially I was invited to take it to the good guys show in Pleasanton, which was in March of last year. But due to COVID, it was canceled. And then ultimately they did the, uh, the show and judging, et cetera, virtually. So we had to submit videos and photographs, et cetera. So, um, you know, I was happy to participate. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful car. And, and, and I guess another vehicle that uh, Ray brought out, you know, we were just talking and said, you know, I'll bring both cars out. I said, okay, let's see what you got. And I guess it's dubbed the Jelly Bean, but it's a, it's a 37 uh, Zephyr sedan. Or, so, yeah, thir 30, 37 two-door sedan. The um, in 37, it was a lowest production car. They made the four-door sedan, the three-window coupe, and the two-door sedan. Clearly, the three-window coupe is the most desirable. But being the lowest production, they made approximately 1,500 of, of the uh, two-door sedans. And um, it's estimated that less than 100 exist today. So that car, as you can see, the stance is lowered. The only body modification we did was remove the fender skirts and fill in a little bit of that area because the fender opening was too wide without the skirt on it. Independent of that, it's got an upgraded chassis consistent with the 39, and then we have a supercharged LS in that car. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I think the, the 37 is, like, I think the 39 is like the eye catcher. It just, it just kind of cruises and everyone looks at it, but I think if you're, the 37 is a bit of a sleeper. Like if you don't, if you don't know what's, what you're next to, I think you might just surprise people with the, uh, off, the off the line there down here. Yeah, you, donut dare, like, right? you, just have to, you just have to be careful with the bias ply tires, so I don't drive it too crazy, but it does drive nice. It's a fun car. It's, got, it's, it's the only car I've ever owned as far as a novelty older car that has a stereo in it, it's all hidden. Um, 
And I don't have to worry so much about the rock chips and things like that that I do with the 39 because, you know, the paint isn't quite as nice, etc. And then I guess, um, I guess with the exception of like with the local cars and coffee, you're going to be taking these cars to any meets this year and the good guys get together? Uh, I'll probably go to the good guys in San Diego. I'm sure I'll go out to the uh, Grand National Roadster Show. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be in one of the buildings, but definitely on the Saturday outside. Um, was considering going to the Ventura Nationals, which is coming up over uh, Labor Day weekend. I might drive the 37 up. Um, and obviously anything they have at the fairgrounds, if and when those, you know, the cruise for the cure and, and uh, the Labor Day cruise. But that may not be until 2022. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, yeah, things are starting to like go up. We've been traveling a lot out of state, but yeah. But in California, it's, it's still been kind of limited on our events. Sure, so far, but, sure. Um, but yeah, that's, um, yeah, well, thank you so much, Ray. Thanks for being part of it. Again, um, and everyone, uh, the whole gang at uh, Finish Line Auto Club, thanks for hosting us here. This facility is uh, incredible. We didn't, uh, it's my first time here, and I was blown away. So, so Ray, thanks for making that phone call and uh, yes. setting this up. And um, again, you'll see some more photos and, uh, yeah, the video of the, uh, Lincoln Zephyrs um, on the website uh, in October and then in, in your mailbox as well. So, thank Tony, you thank you. It. And again, also Tony, who is the developer of the finish line, thank you as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy uh, another installment of Covering Classic Cars.